Hi, and welcome to a quick support video uh, to show you how to use MeasureAnd software with MeasureAnd's SAV Extend product. The SAV Extend is a configurable length instrument for measuring displacement. Uh, it consists primarily of three different types of parts. It has a top assembly uh, with the cable connection, the cable terminator for connecting the instrument to a data logging system. It has one or more uh, extend lift extensions to allow you to configure the length of the shape array to the desired length in the field, uh, as well as a base array of a preset uh, length for uh, monitoring uh, the bottom portion of the instrument. So the idea behind this instrument is you would take it to the field, uh, you would install it into a casing, uh, add lift extensions to get to the desired length for the instrument, uh, and then um, hook it up to a data logging system to monitor the array. There are a few requirements that you need to have when you're doing all this. First of all, you have to have your SAV extend and system uh, ready to assemble and install in the field. You're also going to need a measure end interface consisting of either a shape array field power unit uh, or a portable diagnostics unit uh, in order to connect a computer uh, directly to the shape array uh, in order to uh, build some calibration files. You're also going to need uh, measure ends software, which is freely available from our website for download. Uh, as well as having all the calibration files uh, for the SAV Extend Base Array and all of its li Extend Lift segments uh, installed on your computer. The process for working with an SAV Extend uh, is pretty straightforward. There's really only four steps. Uh, we're not going to really discuss the first step, installing and configuring the SAV Extend to the desired length. Uh, this is covered in the measure and manuals, uh, as well as support portal articles available at support.measureand.com. Uh, but we are going to step through the last three steps here. Uh, the first step we're going to talk about is generating new calibration files. Once you have the SAV Extend installed in the casing uh, to the desired length with the desired lift extensions, um, you're going to need to build a site file and a combined calibration file for the shape array. Uh, and this is just a way of uh, telling the measuring in software um, exactly what order all of your lift segments are connected together uh, and what the actual geometry of the array is in the field. And to do this, you're going to use MeasureAnd's SAA recorder software. Uh, so you download the MeasureAnd software from the website, install it. Uh, you will have the SAA suite. Uh, installed, and when you launch that, you'll get this lovely window with four green buttons. As mentioned earlier, you're going to need to make sure you have all your calibration files, and if you don't have them yet, click on the Get Calibration Files option from the SAA Suite menu, and the easiest way to get them is to just click Get All Calibration Files. Alternatively, if you know exactly what serial numbers that you're dealing with for the lift extensions and the SAV Extend Base Array, you can type in the serial numbers individually here and just click the Get button. Once you have the software installed and all of the calibration files installed, we're going to click the Manual Data Collection button here to launch the SAA Recorder application. We're then going to click the Connect SAA button. When it loads to this screen, it's going to search your COM ports uh, for the, the interface and the shape array to see if it can find an SAV Extend that's connected. When it does, it will pop up with a dialog saying that the SAV Extend was connected, and then a new calibration file and site file will automatically be created. It then is going to prompt you to choose a directory where to save those files. Click the Continue button, and then go and find a blank empty folder in which to save these files. This folder is going to be your project folder. I've just created an SAV Extend 
uh, folder here on my desktop. And I'm going to select that and click OK. And I'm just going to accept the default file name for the extend site file and click the Save button. It's then going to pop up a dialog saying that it has found, it has saved those, uh, that calibration file and site file to that project folder that I've selected on my desktop. And if I go into that folder and quickly look at it, you'll see that it's saved two files, one a calibration file and one a site file. That'll be important for later when we're working with the data. Click on the OK button, and then we're going to click on Start with Found SAAs, and that's going to load us into the SAA Recorder application. The SAA Recorder application is going to do some preliminary loading, but eventually when it's done, it will display a 3D rendering of the shape of the instrument in the borehole or the casing. In my case, I'm using an SAV Extend demo that consists of a two-segment base array and a two-segment extension. So my total size is four segments. Once you're connected to the shape array in this manner using SAA Recorder, um, you'll probably need to do the installation portion for the array, such as verifying the compression of the instrument uh, using the installation verification utility, as well as running diagnostics tests in order to verify that the instrument is working as expected. It's always a good idea to save a complete diagnostics check report file uh, at the beginning of any installation, uh, just as a check that everything is working properly. Make sure you select the save text report file and then just browse to a location where you would like to save that file. In my case, I'm just gonna put it in the project folder right on the desktop. Once you're done verifying your installation compression and doing your diagnostics report, the good idea if you're using a, a low power logging system such as the RST DTSA, an Axio beam logger, or a world sensing logger, or sometimes the RST Affinity Logger to ensure that the shape array is running in the proper low power mode as expected. This can be checked from the SA setup menu and selecting the low power mode menu option. Depending on how you're going to run the instrument, whether you know the lower power mode is a requirement for either the logger or for the duration of the logging program, You'll want to make sure that the low power status is either enabled or disabled based on your desired application. Once you've done this, you can now move on to configuring the data logger. As mentioned, the next step in the process for working with SAV Extend is to generate a logger program for your Campbell Scientific Data Logger or provisioning the data logger if you're using a product from RST, such as the DTSAA or Affinity, or the Axio Beam, or the World Sensing Digital Logger. For this video, I'm going to demonstrate creating a logger program for the Camel Scientific Data Logger. To do this, you're again going to open your SA suite and go to the Configure Logger Program option to open MeasureIn's File Generator. This is a handy little program that allows someone to generate a CR basic program for Camel Scientific data loggers uh, that require no uh, programming knowledge. You can enter in a few uh, key details about the installation uh, and the desired logging interval, and this program will generate the program for you. So I'll enter in a project title, select my type of logger as CR1000. I'll leave my preliminary samples, which are readings that are taken when the program first starts up at five and set my reading interval to six hours. Now, since we're working with an SAV Extend, I will click the Add SAV Extend button 
and here it will prompt me to select a site file for the SAV extent. So in our previous step, when we worked with SAA Recorder, we created this site file and saved it to the project folder on our desktop. I'll just click the Browse button, and I'll go to the desktop and select the extend site file that was created. And then click OK. This is going to add the SAV extend to the project, but you'll notice that the COM port and interface for the logger are not filled out and that it's highlighted in red. To resolve this, we're going to click on the edit option and select the appropriate COM port on the data logger and the connection that's being used. In this case, I'm connecting my demo to COM1 of a CR1000 using an SAA232 interface. We can click Save here, and then click the Generate option, and it's going to prompt us to save the logger program to some location on your computer. In my case, I'm again going to select the SAV Extend folder on my desktop. Once you've got that program generated, you can load that onto the data logger, connect the SAV Extend to it with the same configuration you defined in these various settings, and the logger will monitor your, your SAV Extend. In the case of loggers from RST, such as the DTSA Affinity and Affinity, or the Axio Beam or World Sensing uh, Digital Logger, um, you'll need to provision the data logger instead of running through this program generation. The various support pages from those vendors will have more information on how to provision your data loggers. After provisioning your data loggers and collecting some raw data, you will eventually need to collect the raw data from those loggers into .dat files and then convert them using MeasureAnd's raw data conversion software. The readings collected by the data loggers are raw sensor readings that will need to have the appropriate calibrations applied to them and converted with the MeasureAnd software in order to get usable Cartesian engineering units. To demonstrate converting the raw data, I'm going to convert the data collected on the CR1000 that we configured earlier using the file generator program. When you collect data from a Campbell Scientific data logger, there will be multiple .dat files with the various tables containing raw data readings from the instrument, as well as diagnostics from the instrument. I've collected and saved these files all to the same SAV Extend folder that we've been using on my desktop throughout the entire video. To convert this data, I'm going to open the raw data conversion software by opening the SAA suite and clicking on the data conversion button. When prompted, I'm going to select the reset option. And then when prompted to select a new project, I'm going to click the new project button and just go and select one of the DAT files from the project folder. In this case, it's the SAV Extend folder on my desktop. Because this is an SAV Extend that has multiple parts, we need to tell RADA data that there are multiple different pieces that form up this single array. To do that, we need to select the site file that we created with the SAA Recorder software in a previous step. I'm going to click on the Browse button here and just go to the desktop SAV Extend folder where we saved the Extend site file and select that site file and click open. Once we've selected the DAT files and the site file, we click OK. And Rotadata will do some quick processing of the files and prompt you to configure the conversion settings. We won't go through all these settings here. These are covered in another video on Rotadata that you can find available through the Measuring and Support website. Once you've finished your conversion, if you look back into the project folder, you'll see that it's created some extra files. We've got the multi sa allcart files, .mat files that you would open in the measure and shape array viewer software, as well as the DIY folder with the comma delimited plain text.dat file with the converted readings in it.
We can then either export this comma delimited file into a third party piece of software for analysis, or we can open up the Shape Array Viewer from the SA Suite by clicking the Shape Array Data Viewer option and then just navigating to that project folder and selecting one of the multi SA Alcard files. When it loads up in the Shape Array Viewer, you can then see the serial number for the top extension in the Shape Array, uh, as well as the number of extensions that are connected. And from here, it works just like you would analyze any Shape Array data. The Shape Array Data Viewer is also covered in another video that's available through Measure and Support website. It is very important to keep the raw data collected from the data logger from an SAV extend with its site file and combined calibration file that were generated with SAA Recorder. These must be kept in their own folders separate from any other shape array data. It's very important because the lift extensions for the SAV extend can be disassembled and recombined into different orders and reused with different base arrays. This means that any data collected in with one set of extensions connected in a certain order uh, will have a unique geometry and a unique role calibration that must be applied when converting the data. In order to get that role calibration, you either need to save the calibration files and site files with the raw data, or you need to have the physical instrument assembled in the exact same manner so that you can reproduce those files using the SA Recorder application as we described in a previous step. So very important that you keep all your SAV Extend projects in their own separate folders with their site calibration files generated from the SA Recorder software. I hope you found this video helpful in describing how to work with the SAV Extend software. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out to Measure and directly. You can hit our support website using the support.measureand.com URL in any web browser, or you can email us at support at Thank you.